my name is Benson the Biking Viking and I am just starting my cycle trip from Alaska to Argentina. It's going to be 18,000 miles of fun. Hope you're ready to join me. Let's kick it. Ice, ice, baby. Ice, ice, baby. I am about to start the Cassia Highway, which I think is about 700 kilometers, and it's in the middle of nowhere. There's not too many stops along the way, not too many petrol stations. I just spoke to uh, a guy at the services. He said that the rain over the past couple of weeks has meant all the bears have come out because of roadside berries. There's loads of blueberries on the side of the road. Fingers crossed we don't see too many bears. He also said um, that I am getting out of Dodge just in time because they're predicting rain, torrential rain over the next few days, but that the temperatures are down in the minuses overnight now. So he thinks it's gonna be snow. He said, I need to get south of Dee's Lake over the next two days, and then I should be back in summer. So <laughs> I'm excited to be back in summer. I'm also trying to get down to Kitwonga in six days so that I've got signal for my birthday. So looking forward to that and give the family and girlfriend a call. I'm excited. The roads are already getting a bit quieter than the highways I've been on, which is awesome. The trees are quite enclosed, so I am slightly worried about bears, but an eye out definitely for them now. It just feels like they could come out at any time, so that's quite scary. It does feel like I'm racing a season as well, so like the rain is threatening after that guy said what he said. I'm just trying to get south as quick as I can because I don't want to be here when, when that snow comes. I have also found the patch where we broke down like a month ago, me and Doug. So I'm going to throw throw some rocks at some other rocks in, in honour of our breakdown. Collect that Horcrux back after we spent eight, nine hours on this highway. Three days later. So got into Boyer Lake quite late last night, came on the Cassia and then it flattened out. So cycling until about 8 p.m. Arrived at beautiful Boyer Lake, clear waters, and then met Jazz, Sukman and Harveen, um, who graciously let me camp with them and cooked me food. Do you wanna say hi guys? Hey everyone watching. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. So we uh, we had a few had a few drinks and stayed up late into the night. wasn't too cold last night, so it seems to be warming up as I'm heading south. And then uh, big day today. So we've just had some chai tea to uh, keep me going. So today has been pretty tough. I started packing up camp and then was about to cook breakfast and the rain started to come in. So I just made a quick wrap instead of my oats and just set off for the day. Got into Dee's Lake, had a coffee and some donuts, but I am, despite wearing my rain jacket, I'm soaked. Um, so I've set off cycling again. It is cold. I've put all my gear back on and I'm just trying to get warm. On top of that, the elevation is going to start. <laughs> getting there so I've got two big climbs I think until I can set up camp today so cold wet <laughs> and elevation inbound it's gonna be a tough day this is definitely some type 2 fun today fingers crossed it's not too windy might lie down here in fetal position just to make sure we get no wind if you can see above me I am at the Nat Pass summit the road at the moment so there's a fire on the Alcan which means that every truck has to go this way. Commercial vehicles can't go the other way. So there are trucks up and down here blasting past me. The road isn't that big. So it's, it's making for quite a difficult ride today, especially in the rain. The guy just pulled in back there because he was driving into Dee's Lake. I was filming and like jumped down and lied down. And he thought I bailed out on my bike. So as he's driving back out south the way I'm going, pulls over and he's like, you. You are right, bud? Like, do you need anything? You, you bailed out back there. And I was like, no, no, I'm, I'm just filming. And he's like, oh, do you want a beer? I was like, always. I said, I'm gonna save it for later. Once I get out the, uh, the cold weather and the rain. Mm -hmm. 
had a bit of a uh, bit of a crazy one today. They're not all good, so it rained all night last night. Heavy, heavy rain. And whenever it rains, I just start to worry about the tent, and I just don't sleep that well. So we power through today. It's meant to be 150 kilometers today. I'm just going to see how much I can do. But I am, I'm yawning now. I am knackered, so not in the best headspace. I was like, am I ill? Am I all this? It's just tiredness. So yeah, they're not all good. But we're starting to see for the first time waterfalls and really sharp rock features. I'm not sure whether it's how the road was cut, but a lot of bridges like this have got metal gratings on. I haven't noticed that until today. So as I went over, I kind of looked down and it was, I don't know, an 80 meter drop to waterfalls below the metal gratings. And I was like, go, go, go. I tried to walk back over. I might go and get some video there now, but I don't like, I don't like heights and that's, it's not great. So I braved it for the camera. <laughs> Je I got jelly legs. Yeah, that was horrible. Didn't like that at all. We've hit a few of those types of bridges today and they've all had metal gratings. Didn't realize that it drops off like that. I'm gonna cross them a bit slower next time, I think, or maybe faster. I don't know what's better or worse. Water testing, 12 to 18 hours. I helped a guy who had broken down on the side of the road and then all of a sudden it started to rain and it didn't let up at all until about an hour ago. So all into town, Bell 2 is the, the local town. There wasn't much there and they're only serving miners. So I managed to get a few snacks. And then two Ks outside of town was this camp spot. Again, good for RVs, but for tents, it was horrendous. So I set up my tent when the rain let up a bit, but it continued to pour down. So I'd like cook dinner and everything inside the tent for the first time ever. Not the best for bears, but I just didn't have another choice. Rain throughout the night, there was <laughs> trucks pulling up like 10 meters away from my tent and just idling their engines. Yeah. Uh, but I still slept like a baby because I was so knackered from the day before. Although it's been uh, awful in the rain, the sun is hopefully starting to come out. And hopefully today will be a bit drier. We can only hope. Do you know what that is? Sun! <laughs> I haven't seen it in three days. Sun? Hello. Oh, I'm buzzing. I've been in the rain for uh, uh, pretty much three days now. Just these like it started so to see that out buzzing welcome to me collecting water finally remember the camera normally at this time of the day i am knackered and i just do the stuff that needs to be done and then afterwards i'm like oh, i should have filmed that i'm going to show you how I get water. Key materials, water bottle, bear spray, just in case. Camera, bear spray, nearby at all times. We check that down there. We've got our water containers. We have our water filter. Collect the dirty water in this. We're gonna fill this up. Beautiful. Put the water filter on and try and keep the bad water away as much as we can. And that is all there is to it. And the thing is, it takes a while. It takes three or four bags to fill this one and a half liters. So I will catch you when they're all done. It's taken about 10, 15 minutes to fill out both of those. So you can see why when I'm out there on the road cycling, I, I don't really want to pull over in the middle of the day unless I want to break. So if I can take water from petrol stations or donations, just keeps me keeps me going but it does mean at the end of the day I'm looking for to camp near lakes to camp near rivers just to make sure I've got some um, on the days where I don't it can be quite tough that's it I normally take a bit back to camp with me as well so you can drink straight from here so yeah me done over now so quick four hour sprint from Cranberry Junction I have arrived in Kitwonga I am soaking wet <laughs> So time to get dry, get some food on board, and then it's the birthday tomorrow. Followed by what may be the biggest decision of the trip so far, Prince George or Prince Rupert. So stay tuned, we'll see what happens. I'll catch you later.